it was for you guys, uh, you guys uh, being here this evening uh, as coaches, instructors, potential coaches, whatever, uh, in the most challenging sport in the world, yacht racing, high performance dinghy racing. What is ranked number two in the world, most challenging sport in the world? Answer? F1. Well remembered. Formula One motor racing is ranked number two. What is ranked number three? Equestrian. Well remembered. Equestrian, <laughs> working with the horses, uh, <laughs> is uh, ranked number three. But ranked number one, yacht racing. Uh, high performance dinghy racing is ranked as the most challenging sport in the world. And you want to coach it, uh, be involved in it, okay? And at the end of the day, it's you know a massive world out there, uh, which coaches obviously need to be thinking a lot about. Uh, if we can go on to the next one, please. Again, sorry to keep using you up and down or whatever. That's all right. Keep busy. Um, and obviously, um, as regards uh, uh, gaining the experience, the knowledge uh, that you uh, will gather. Every time you go out there on the water, uh, working with people, uh, I mean, very briefly, uh, I kicked off um, as officially as a coach. I did my uh, RYA coaches course uh, back in 1976 when the National Sailing Centre was at Cowes uh, on the Isle of Wight. Uh, but uh, since then, uh, obviously, or before then, just before then, um, I was the Royal Navy coach for uh, two years. Uh, but then that led me on to, obviously, joining the Royal Yachting Association and uh, establishing the National Race Training Scheme. And I was there from 1977 to the year 2000. Um, and it was great uh, that uh, the, the year 2000 for me uh, was the apex of my coaching career on the staff of the RYA uh, when we sat on the stairs of the Opera House with three gold medals and two silver medals and I just sat down and said to myself, as a coach, the last 23 years has been worth it. Because that's how long it took to go from nowhere to somewhere. Uh, by working with the youth of Great Britain in our sport and getting them fired up and motivated, obviously towards bigger and you know, uh, better things. Some people think it's better, uh, some don't, uh, to be at the Olympic Games and whatever. Um, then I had the honour of being Olympic team coach at the Atlanta Olympic Games 96, where we got the two silver medals. Uh, what was interesting about 96 for me was that uh, GBR, as a team, GBR, only won four medals. Four. How many were just winning in London? 160 something? <laughs> you know. But anyway, back in 96, not that many years ago, we only won four, two in sailing. One in rowing with Steve Redgrave, yeah, his gold medal, and um, the javelin thrower. Uh, Black 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 no, no, uh, uh, the male. Batley. Batley, Batley. Steve Bradley, yeah. He won a medal uh, at that Atlanta game. So we only had four medals, uh, and that was it. And uh, two of them in sailing, two silvers. And um, what I found very interesting, uh, just to give you a little bit of background to how this all got going, really was that um, uh, at the um, uh, medal ceremony in Atlanta, uh, the uh, chairman of the BOA came from Atlanta all the way down to uh, Savannah, where the sailing was, took the whole sailing team out for dinner, all 16 of us, yeah, and at the end of which, he put his credit card on the table, and he leant over to me, I sat next to him, and said, Jim, thank God, I'm quoting him now word for word, thank God you lot did all right. And he paid for our dinner. And I thought that was awesome. But what was more awesome, ladies and gents, was this. Up until that time, i.e. 1977 through to 1996, our budget at the RYA for race training and training was 70, 000, well, 60 to 70,000 pounds per annum. When we came back from Atlanta in the October, we arrived back in September, but in the October, we had a nice little phone call saying, it's gone up to 2.3 million. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, an important turning point in British sailing, really, uh, as regards funding. Because at the end of the day, uh, sailing, and many people maybe don't know this, 
but sailing is only measured in two areas, in funding terms. Number one, the World Youth Championships, okay, with the youth team. It's measured at that point, whether we're successful or not, and whether or not we get funding, yeah? And the only other area where it is measured in financial terms is the Olympic Games. And that's it. Okay? So if we're not successful in those two areas of our sport, then we don't get the funding. Um, and obviously it goes without saying that since 96, because we've done what we've done in sailing, we've been pretty well funded ever since. In fact, going to Sydney 2000 with that extra money was the sole, well, not the sole reason, with all due respect, but maybe one of the key reasons why we got three gold and two silver. Because we were able to ship our boats out of London to Sydney in refrigerated containers, okay, which you needed to do. That cost a fortune, yeah? Uh, things like that. We never stayed in the Olympic Village. Our accommodation was right next to the marina, so we didn't have to get a boat ride 45 minutes each way every day which, you know, is not good for the competitors, yeah? Things like that, you know, all make the big difference. Um, you know, before you can think about getting on the water and doing the coaching bit, yeah? Uh, it's all the background stuff. But uh, maybe one key point, a further key point about all this lot here and the experience of doing it, was when we started the programme in 1977, uh, Bob Bond initiated it, God bless him, uh, along with uh, Alistair Mitchell, uh, the Scottish national coach, and they, right or wrongly, employed me to get on with it. Um, and obviously we did. But uh, it was only for five years. We had a five-year uh, plan in which to start producing results. 20 press-ups were being late. Um, <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, uh, it was made quite clear that with the GBI Youth Programme, it's got to be successful within a five-year period. If it isn't, it will be scrapped. Okay? That was the brief. That was what you know, the RYA said. That was their policy. In the fifth year, okay, in Auckland, New Zealand, Jason Belvin, Andy Hemmings won the World Youth Gold Medal. And had it not been for those two ferrets, the whole thing would have been scrapped there and then. So we've got those two people in the UK to thank for, as it is the rest, as they say, is history. Do you get the idea? Mm -hmm. And it happened in the fifth year. It took us five years to get these ferrets trained up to be good enough to go halfway around the world and win a gold medal. Yeah? Uh, and that's what you know, it's all about. What we do as coaches does not happen overnight. You know, it takes time mileage, effort, commitment, I can go on and on and on about uh, coaching in any sport. You get the idea? You know, you, you've really got to uh, be committed to it uh, and get on with it. And mark my words, there'll be plenty of disappointments on the way. Yeah? Plenty. More than there are, obviously, um, the achievements, so to speak. But standing here today talking to you guys, obviously, and I look back, on uh, my coaching career, I mean, and you know, it's just been incredible how through that GBR youth program, it just got on a roll, it generated a lot of top ferrets. One of them, three gold medals he's got now, started right here in this very club, Stuart Childerly, yeah? And we've won three gold medals together, one of the youth worlds in 84 and two actual gold medals. Um, you know, and he started right out there, through that window, uh, as a young ferret. Um, you know, so they are out there, and you know we've got to find them, we've got to nurture them, and we've got to get on with the job of kicking them around and making sure they're in the right place at the right time, as you have to be on a starting line. Yes. Okay. Right. Next one, please. <laughs>